In today's video, I'm going to show you the same magazine 20 years apart. So here on the right, we have the September 2023 edition of Vogue, this year's to the time of filming. And then here on the left, we have the 2003 September edition of Vogue. So I had been thinking about just flipping through this year's September issue of Vogue. Uh, but then I got the idea to a comparison and I thought it would be really fun to take a look back at how things were 20 years ago versus how they are now. So this video will have four parts. We'll start with an initial comparison just based on the exterior of the magazines. Then we'll flip through our vintage Vogue, and then we'll flip through this year's Vogue. And lastly, we'll do uh, an in-depth comparison of some things we saw in each magazine. So let's get into the initial comparison. So the first thing I noticed when I saw the covers side by side was the difference in the choice of cover model. On the left we have Nicole Kidman, A-list actress, and on the right, on this year's cover, we have uh, four of the 90s supermodels, the greatest of all time. I remember it being a topic of discussion in the 2003-ish era, basically that models used to be on the cover of magazines, but uh, then they were kind of replaced by actresses and singers and other kinds of celebrities. And I think in this 2003 edition of Vogue, we are probably very much in the actresses covering fashion magazines era. Today, I still feel like a lot of magazines are cover, uh, celebrities are on the cover of magazines mostly. US anyway. So the return to form with having the 490 supermodels on here is an interesting change. Uh, I almost got the 30 year old edition of Vogue and I, I almost want to say one of these four ladies was on the cover. Um, I can't remember. It was definitely a model on the cover of the 1993 version. September edition of Vogue. Another interesting aspect of these is that they're both kind of uh, neutral in tone. I don't know if that's typical for the September edition of Vogue. I know that in general the US version of Vogue is kind of known for being maybe a little more safe uh, commercial than international uh, Vogue's. Because uh, a lot of different countries have their own version of Vogue, and some of them are a lot more adventurous. But 20 years ago, and this year, it's like these very neutral tones. And on the 2003 one, it's like uh, warmer neutrals. It's kind of gold and beige and tan. And then here, it's a little cooler, with this black, white, gray. Another really striking difference between these two covers is the amount of text. This year's is very minimalist, just with the headline. And then here, it's telling us all kinds of stuff. I have to wonder if that's because fewer people today buy magazines as kind of an impulse purchase when you're like at a checkout. In the 2000s, especially early 2000s, magazines were just sold a ton of different places. And it was really easy to buy one on impulse, and you would be, like, scanning the cover at, at, while you're waiting at the grocery checkout or something. But they did not have Vogue at my local grocery store. I had to go to the bookstore to get it. Um, so I wonder if it's kind of like people are already going to be going to buy a magazine, and maybe they don't need to kind of catch so much attention. But I'm not sure. I want to read all these headlines, but first, there are two tiny details in tiny text on these that stand out to me. It's the littlest thing, and I feel like no one probably cares at all, but I find it so sort of odd that they abbreviate. 
abbreviated September differently on these editions. So over here on the left we have S-E-P-T and then on the right S-E-P-N-O-T. I feel like the standard way to abbreviate it is with the T. So I wonder when they decided to drop the T. The price difference on these is also quite striking to me. In 2003, Vogue cost $3.95 in the USA, $4.95 in Canada, and $4.95 in foreign, which I guess is probably uh, any foreign market that it's in. And then the 2023 edition costs $9.99. So inflation is very real. More than double the price in 20 years. I wonder if the fact that people don't buy magazines as much, or as many people don't buy them, I wonder if that affects the price too. Like maybe they need to charge a little more to make a similar amount, but who knows. Okay, so let's take a look at the headlines on the 2003 Vogue. We don't know anything about the 2023 20 except that we're gonna get a piece featuring these four supermodels. So, we have Nicole Kidman on the cover. It says, Fashion's brightest star, Nicole Kidman, on life as an icon. Uh, and then the magazine includes 740 pages of polished chic. We're gonna learn about the sleekest new suits, the prettiest cocktail dresses, the skirt controversy, choose your hemlines, and the bombshell accessories. I'm very interested to know uh, what the skirt controversy is. It's got to be about the length, right? We'll find out. So then we're also going to get a feature on stress and skin. Calm down to clear up. Is your hair hip? One little snip can change your life. How to succeed in fashion. Ten stylish women and ten stylish careers. And then we're going to get two features on other celebrities. Hugh Jackman, who knew Wolverine could dance, and Katie Holmes, breaking out of the small screen box. Okay, so before we get into the flip through of our 2003 one, there's one more comparison. I've got to show you these from the side. Look at the difference in width. Miss 2003 is wide. She is thick. Um, she's also a little bit shorter. This year's, but this year's 2003 edition is still on the big side for a magazine, but man, it's nothing compared to this, which almost feels like a phone book. Uh, like, I, I remember that the September edition used to be really big, but I guess I forgot just how big. But anyway, let's pull through this big one. Okay, so we're starting off with a Ralph Lauren blue ad, an ad for the new women's fragrance by Ralph Lauren. Oh, and it kind of pulled out. So it also says Bloomingdale's down here, and it has a phone number that you can call with the item number. So I guess you could order it on the phone. How oh, cute. Tiny letters. 
case, or was in 2003. Sex Avenue, this watch that is so interesting because I really don't think that you see that much in uh, current magazines, but we'll see. This is so 2000s. That heavy makeup with this colorful, like, sort of earthy tones, sunny tones outfit. Um, just like, and then just a black, harsh, smoky eye. Very early 2000s. She looks like a pop star with her styling. So now a Burberry and we have Kate Moss.
together an old playlist with Adam Westfall, Casper, A Career in Living. So this must be an ad for like businessy kinds of clothes.
signed the ball of her adoring son. Hugh Jackman, a chairperson of the New Yorkers for Children Gala, would approve. Another glamorous guy with a good heart. The action star appears on Broadway this month in The Boy from Oz. The true story of the Australian performer Peter Allen. I very much admire Jackman's commitment to this role at a time when his value as a commercial movie star has never been higher. It so happens, however, that Jackman can really sing and really dance. I was blown away by his Oklahoma turn of the Tonys, and I'm sure he will enjoy a great triumph. Speaking of happy turns, Julia Reed, my first hire for Vogue in 1988, writes this month about getting married at the age of 42 when you've never been married before. I have long adored Julia's honesty and wit, and I'm absolutely delighted for her. There's nothing like a good friend's wedding to add a dash of color to one's life. So interesting letter from the editor. There's a lot more about stories and celebrity than about fashion. I wonder if the new letter from the editor 20 years later will be the same or much different. Some ads for girl jeans. I still don't know how to say this. Mew mew. Mew mew mew. I should look it up. Some men's Rachel Sander. Dolce Cabana. She's just chilling on the bed frame. Oh, this is pretty.
disagree with me. We'll see if they talk about watches at all in the new one.
gets multiple pages in this magazine so it's like they all bought a bunch of different pages 
piece about getting about saying I do at 42. I feel like that happens all the time now. Maybe it was more rare in 2003 or more socially taboo. I'm not sure. A big department store presence in the ads section.
fashion person is Stella McCartney. Only 31 then. Blue Marine and this feels very cottage core, kinda. Stella McCartney's piece continued. Then we have Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. Why do I feel like I remember black opium but not opium? Is black opium a blanker of this? Like a spin-off of this? Or Stella. And there's Sarah Jessica Parker wearing uh, uh, Stella McCartney on the cover of Vogue. Raymond Wilde. Watch. D. Modolo Milano. Especially the ring and the chain. I wonder what happened to that. Like, did they just use a stock picture or did they want to change out the jewelry? It looks a little more natural here, but I don't know. I think that's photoshopped on Valentino. There's a fairly high stalking presence here, which is notable to me because I feel like stockings are a little bit more in now than they have been in a long time. Stockings were just decidedly not in, I feel, for a while. Obviously, anyone can wear stockings at any time, but I just feel like for all the longest time, you didn't see them at all. I like that embroidered back. The third woman in the careers and fashion is Isabel Toledo, the designer. A Chanel ad for a skin tint or foundation. It's a really pretty picture. Vera Wang, the fragrance. Available at Saks Fifth Avenue. Then we have Viola. So it does have a bit of a smell, but it's kind of masculine, more masculine than I would have thought. I don't know what it smells like, but I mean, it is 
tuxedo trouser. Why not do it with a fitted jacket? That was the move. Add for lycra, the fabric or the material. I don't know if it's like a fabric itself or if it's a material in fabrics. How to wear it. L'enfant French twist. So I think this is uh, different people wearing L'enfant. So on the left we have a 24 year old Rosario Dawson. Up here we have Dana Glover, who they say is a songbird, singer songwriter. Joanne Garden, the owner of Love Luck and Angels, a special events planning firm. So this is a ring uh, designed by interior designer Mitchell Whitney. So I, I guess instead of a diamond, he has just made the stone out of all platinum. So the ring is platinum and then the stone is platinum. That's a little too minimalistic for me. I think I prefer any kind of gemstone, but it's an interesting idea. They say that it's Matrix-esque, like the movie Minotauri is. It almost looks like it's gonna, I don't know, melt and then reform itself or something like Alex Mackie. Alex Mackie-esque, like that um, show, Mercedes-Benz. <sighs> Reminds me of the Say You Will Be There, Say You'll Be There uh, music video by the Spice Girls. Now it's night and it's day again. From the desert to the to a house to sunset at the house. sponsoring or something. Here we have an Avon ad. The treatment that does what no collagen injection can. Introducing a new clinical line and wrinkle corrector. This is an interesting claim. What's a collagen injection? Is Botox is what I would think of, like Botox or a filler, is what I would think of for an injection, but Botox is made of like bot bot botulinum toxin or something weird. And then fillers are made of like, the ones today are mostly hyaluronic acid. I don't actually have any uh, injections of any kind, but I have friends who do. Well, call your Avon lady and get filled in. Okay, so we have a piece on a husband and wife team that makes ultra-luxurious handmade-to-order shoes and bags. So we've got some funky, interesting shoes and bags. It doesn't really say that anything is particularly a trend, so Adrian Vitadini. I don't think I'm familiar with this brand. Light, 
luscious florals, including water lily, orange blossom, and exotic tiare flower. Balanced with warm, rich amber, sheer musk, and pristine blonde woods. I don't think I've ever smelled that. I don't really remember her having a fragrance. So then classic textures, tweeds, herring bones, wool, fur, houndstooth. I'm gonna write this down as a trend, even though it's in the advertising section. Cause, um, that was definitely a trend. I think I already wrote down tweed. Uh, classic texture. Possible, which was not wonderful to 
see everywhere when I was growing up. Form and function. It's just a visa. And, oh, this is a cute perfume bottle. So is this like a real transaction? And then like the things featured bigger are an ad. I wish this were big. If this is the only drag report in the whole 740 page magazine, I think that was a bit of a misstep, but we're not done yet. Maybe there'll be more after it follows. Oh yes, chandelier ink earrings, 1 million percent were a trend. 1 million percent, like you would wear chandelier earrings with a regular tank top or lace trim. Bye. 
calling an ad. So it's for shoes, but they're using the... Oh, I didn't even notice that those were uh, heel-shaped. I think this is a fun... a fun choice from the ad team. Oh yeah, that special K. A 90-calorie bar. I do not miss early 2000s diet culture. What is a 90-calorie bar gonna do for you? You're gonna be hungry in like one second. Oh my gosh. Replace two meals a day with a special K cereal meal. I remember that. It's like the... They would advertise around this diet. Um, and they recommend you have one serving of special K for two meals. And then you would lose a bunch of weight. And it's like, yeah, but of course you would because you're barely eating anything. I just do not miss... Do not miss early 2000s diet culture. Some people are saying it's like coming back. And I'm like, no, no, no. Let's... Let's be done with it. So this is a piece on these... A jean company, I think. Satellites is what it's called. I don't know it. Smart. Okay. So here we have the what do they call it in the in the other thing? Classic textures. So we've got some hounds tooth and we've got some tweed. Would that be called? That's plaid, right? Just a small print plaid. Um and I'm not sure what this would be called, but it's classic.
seen Wicked. So the circle of friends thing is like you buy the necklace to signify that you are quitting and then other people know you are. Gosh, I wonder who bought those. Many people did. I gotta find out why Jenna Witt was the nut neck brace. Oh my gosh, so I found the part with the neck brace. She had burned her neck. Actually, it's not like a prop. I guess she herniated three discs in her... Presumably in her spine, neck area of her spine. Doing a move. Oh my gosh, so here's what Christian Chenoweth said. In the South, we do this thing where you flip your hair up to make it big and then spray it into place, she explains. It's just something we're born with down there. So is that the move? Gosh, wow. We know she recovered, so that's good. So there's a travel piece, and it's about going to the British countryside, which kind of makes sense thematically with uh, kind of all the talk of we're doing sophisticated, traditional looks, traditional textures, classic textures. It's on the Oh, another perfume ad. This one have a... It does. Oh, and I feel like I can tell this one's been opened. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I'll probably cut me opening these because it's actually a really loud sound and I don't want to wake anyone up. Um, but this smells so familiar. It's really nice, but I can't put my finger on what it smells like. It just smells like perfume, but it, it's like not generic to me somehow. It's nice. Shador Dior. I feel like that's still around, but I'm not sure. It's like, I mean, it kind of just smells like a perfume section at a department store, but in a good way. Ideology and why my favorite room is my closet. If I had a room, that was a closet. It might be my favorite room, too. You're never too- oh, funky hat. What is this called? My brain, when I saw this one, newsboy, is that what that's called? I don't think the funky hat is gonna be a returning trend in the 2023 Vogue, but we'll see. Ideology. It's so interesting to me because these are so different. Like, I don't feel like these are the same. The same woman would have these two things even if she was going to two different places. Does that make sense? Like, she's so much funkier than her. And typically, like, a single store with a single line, it kind of seems like the same person would wear all of it. This thing with the skirt over the boots was big, but I feel like it, maybe it was starting to go out by this point. But I'm not really remembering wrong. And this is also a different woman to me, like a different style. This looks very like Shirley Manson, and a lot more cool than the last two in a, in a different way. Um, but maybe that was the point of the line, like, oh, we have different. We have something for every style. Never heard of it. It was at some other stores. Mercedes spent fashion week fashion forecast. So this is another trend piece, but again, I'm confused. Special advertising section. I'm writing this down in the miscellaneous because it's confusing to me to have what seems to me like the major trend pieces be sponsored in this way. Uh, I don't really get it. I don't, if I don't work at a fashion magazine, so I'm like, maybe this is normal. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm so curious to see if in the 2023, if there are pieces that look so much like trend pieces that are sponsored. This little tiny disclosure to Bit sneaky. <laughs> I totally have some booth 
shots to her like this and I would love if they came back fully in style because they are really fun to wear but I don't remember them being in in 2003 I feel like it was much later that they were in maybe I was just behind the times okay so Visa cards are in in 2003 this Olympus digital camera this is such an odd thing to me to have in like this major a huge issue. It's just very like, it's just not what I would have expected. W hotels are in. Okay. Song. It's like, what is song? It's a website for flights. I do love this illustration. Look how cute. talking about um, this choreographer is getting a feature too this is a feature on this documentary filmmaker Sarah Shaw not sure, maybe it's Sarah S-A-I-R-A this is just a nice painting coming out. 
advisory service, not a reader service, but um, it's a nice way to, to look at title it. Okay, so then the television series, The Blues, Nip Duck, A Minute with Stan Hooper, an ad for Brioni. So this is a piece about a group of painters or artists who are raising money uh, for a charity to preserve um, Infusium Leaven Higher Product. So then, this is a piece about a novel, The Namesake. space kind of ad. piece on a book that led an update of Little Women called The Little Women and it kind of retells it putting the Little Women in modern times so 2003 times some ads for TSE
process and mass distribution. So, I have no idea what that means. But it does kind of seem like a lawyer or something was like, no, you have to say at mass distribution. I have no idea why, though. And it looks like these are the names of the six colors, which look almost exactly the same. I do not miss that. Like at the drugstore, when I was younger, I remember they would really only have a few shades of a lot of the face products, and they literally were like almost exactly the same. Oh, okay. So, now we're in a trend section. I'm excited. So, this is a numbered list of, I think, makeup trends. So, the first one is this red lipstick. And it's kind of a specific red. It's a little bit deep uh, without being dark. And maybe it's a little bit cool toned. The two specific ones that they're featuring that are like the look are Shu Umara Rouge 4 in 134 and Lancome Juicy Rouge in Grenadine. I love this kind of red lip. If that one comes back in 2023, that would be good by me. But I think it's just classic. A red lipstick. Like a classic red lip is always good. But I mean, I would say just wear the shade that looks best on you, you know? And for a Vino moisturizer, it minimizes the appearance of hair. How? Anyone tried it? Did it minimize your hair? The second makeup trend is Arch Angels. So it's kind of just saying bold brows. They spoke to Charlotte Tilbury, who did the brows at Prada, the Prada runway, and she said, groomed brows can transform a face, creating an illusion of perfection without looking too made up. They're full in the center and tapered toward the end, which opens up the eye in a sexy new way. They're very Marlene Dietrich, masculine and feminine, strong and sensual. still, I don't know if taboo is the word, but it wasn't as common as it is today. 
this piece. This is the kind of thing that would never fly today, I feel. Maybe it would. It's okay. Return to me. Childbirth is hard, but getting back into pre-childbirth shape, infinitely harder. After three consecutive pregnancies, Sally Singer jets up to the baby, reports from the runways, and confronts the ultimate challenge. <sighs> so presumably that's getting back into pre-childbirth shape. I'm, let's just keep moving. I'm so glad that things aren't quite as bad in terms of body image as they were in the early 2000s. It was not a good time to be a young person with a developing mind. It was very, like, just skinny, skinny, skinny. Okay. Uh, Dolce & Gabbana light blue. This, I think, is totally still around. I feel like I've smelled it. I'm gonna smell this. Okay. <laughs> I don't think the light blue has held up quite as well as some of the other fragrances. It's a little rough. I, like, I don't think, um, the integrity of the fragrance lasted as well. Not smell like what I remember it smelling. It smells a bit off. This is gorgeous. Beautiful picture. Emmanuel and Caro Paris. I don't know the brand, but what a gorgeous image. Oh, wow, that's so pretty. I love it. I like the way it flows. It's so nice. The monochromatic color scheme is beautiful, too. Gorgeous. That's really pretty as well. Look how cute that bag is. The little ball. I feel like this is something that would still be popular today. Yeah. 
is creating to distract you from your real problem. Huh. I wonder what a, a modern day dermatologist would say about that, if they would agree. So this seems to be an essay written by Joan Juliet Buck. Actually, it had been a while. 
since we saw an ad, which is not the experience for most of the magazine, which is mostly ads. So we have a Perrier ad, a feature on what the models are wearing. Ooh, I love that dress. It's a John Galliano draped dress. $3,775. So, very expensive little dress. I wonder how much it would cost today. It would probably be like $10,000 based on how inflation for some other stuff is. Also, we've got those drop earrings. These aren't technically chandeliers, but they're like chandelier-ish. A diesel ad. Stuff. 
section. Here. This has been featured more than once, too, hasn't it? Horoscope for September 2003. Pause it here if you want to read your horoscope for September 2003. Um, I'll read mine, Aquarius. So it says, if you have any unfinished business or unresolved relationships you thought would disappear, be prepared to see them suddenly resurrected. The planet Uranus is quickly revisiting your sign when you're entering the second chance cycle of some very important chapters of your life. Before long, you will have as past situations that the planets have decreed. Not quite over. I do not remember at all what I was doing in September of 2003, so I can't judge the accuracy of Athena Star. Rest of your day or night, and I will see you soon.